Hi, this is Scott Kinkle with another episode of Tuesday Tidbits. Our topic today is the perfect customer or the quest for the perfect customer. The issue of perfect customers actually came up recently. I was doing a strategy session with one of my students and as I typically do, I asked her to describe one of her worst experiences with a customer and she went on to say how painful and awful and how terrible it was and and in the end of describing it which took quite a while and i'm leaving out a whole lot of the description she said it was absolutely just not worth the money even though they did close the deal but she said if i had to go back and do it again i not i would not have done it again and then i asked um why did you work with them and and she said well part of it's because i i needed the business but more importantly she said you know, you can't turn down the business, not in this economy. And she kept going on and justifying why she she had to work with them. Um, and, and she kind of said, well, I didn't know they'd be that much a pain in the butt, which I don't know. I might not agree with that. I then wanted her to give me a description of, of what did she think was her best customer, the perfect one. And she went through the whole story, how she was in the checkout line at the grocery store, uh, overheard the lady in front of her talking about her woes, about they just moved into the area, had hardly unpacked, husband got transferred, and didn't know who to talk to, thought she might, you know, not even be able to sell her house, and maybe lose money on it. And my student handed her card and, and said, look, if you'd like me to come in and sit down with you, I'd happily do that, give me a call. And, and ended up getting hired, listed it, sold it, got money, and they loved her. Um, and, and she said, I wish they were all like that at, at you know, at the point to which she said, I, I just, I, I know they're not like that. I wish they were. I, I just, I know that that can't be the way it is all the time. And, and, and I said, well, what if, what if it could be like that all the time? You know, what if you could only deal with perfect customers and never have to deal with not perfect customers? What would that do to your business? And she said, I'd feel better. I'd work harder. I'd probably make a lot more money, but more importantly, I'd feel good about it. And this is the issue. You do have a choice. I mean, you may not believe you have a choice because at first most of my students don't believe it. You might not believe you have a choice of who you work with. But there's actually other ways of looking at it. And I know this after spending two decades working with agents on how to grow their business, that if you decide not to choose who you work with or how you work or when you work, then they're going to choose for you. And you don't want that. The agents who make the most money get this. They absolutely decide when they work, how they work, and who they work with, or more importantly, who they don't work with. And why? Because they understand the cost of working with those pain in the you-know-whats. In fact, uh, one student, uh, a fellow named Rob, I won't give his last name, but you could look it up. He's in the Portland, Oregon market, and, and I think he said it best. He said to me, hiding behind every pain-in-the-ass prospect was a perfect customer just waiting to be noticed. In other words, his feeling was that for every bad prospect you turn away, a good, perfect customer turns up. And that's really, that's a a key point to understand because he didn't credit his marketing, his website, his prospect, and he, he gave credit to the fact that he was able to turn away bad customers and it opened the door for him to do more business. Remember, over 200 closed transactions a year, you got to not work with everybody. You got to work with the right everybody's because the right customers will do what you tell them to do and you'll end up making more money. Whereas the wrong customers are going to drive you crazy and make you wish to get out of the business. So the next time you're faced with this decision of trying to decide, should I work with this person or should I not? Just remember what Rob's theory is. Right behind them, after you send them off, is a perfect customer, but they're hiding behind that pain in the ass prospect. I hope that this makes a difference in your business. Let me know what you think. Visit my website, www.howtosellmorehouses.com. Leave your comments and questions and concerns there. This is Scott Kinkle. Thank you so much for listening. Happy learning.